Our next topic in physics is entitled uh, nuclear radiation. Actually one of my favourite topics, quite weirdly, I know. Right, um, just to be clear on what we mean by nuclear radiation. Nuclear radiation is something that's released from the nucleus of an atom that can ionise other things. So ionise just means that it can give or take electrons. So we've talked about ions before. Now for the higher, you need to know that ionisation can start chemical reactions, it can damage DNA, so it's um, the idea that radiation can give you cancer is linked to it damaging your DNA. And it can also change the shape of proteins. Now if you remember from way back in chemistry one, when we were talking about um, how heating foods or heating meats can change the shape of the proteins, that can denature them, well, this does something very similar. The ionising radiation can change the shape of the protein, which means it can't do its job anymore. So that's what we mean by ionising radiation. Now, ionising radiation comes in three varieties. There is alpha, which is really short range. It doesn't travel very far at all, just a few centimetres. It can be stopped by something as thin as paper, but it is the most ionising type of radiation, which means it's the most dangerous because it's the most likely to damage your DNA. Now, it is used in smoke alarms, and we can use it in smoke alarms because you tend not to stand very close to your smoke alarm, and it's not going to travel outside of it. Um, basically, we use it to create an electric current. When smoke gets in the way, it stops the electric current, and that starts the alarm going off. So that's one use of it. However, it is also the type of radiation that was used to kill Alexander Litvinenko. So it took a man who looked like this, and in a couple of weeks, someone put some alpha radiation in his, uh, uh, an alpha emitter into his tea, he drank it, and in a couple of weeks, he looked like that. So it is extremely dangerous. Right, the next type of radiation is beta radiation. Now, this has got a moderate range. It's going to be the word for beta, moderate. So it's got a range of about one metre. It's stopped by aluminium, so it can go through paper, but a thin layer of aluminium should be enough to stop it. And it's moderately ionising, so it's moderately dangerous. And uses of it are to monitor the thickness of paper, so we can see how much of it goes through the paper and decide if our paper is all the same thickness when you're at the paper mill. So make sure you don't make it thicker and then thinner and then thicker and also as a medical tracer. So this picture down here, everywhere it's lit up, shows you where the um, beta tracer that this person was given. So they were given something that emitted beta radiation. Then we've detected it and we can see where it went. And we can see where there might be problems because um, all these places it's gone, it probably shouldn't have. Um, it looks like it was sugar they were given. So we would expect lots to be in the brain, um, but not lots to be over here. So this could be an indication that they've got a tumor. So this is a use for beta radiation. Right, our final variety of radiation is gamma radiation, which is long range, which means it can travel kilometers really. It goes a really, really long way. It can uh, be stopped by lead. So it can go through paper, it can go through aluminium. We need a thick layer of lead to stop it. It is, however, the least ionizing. So it is the least dangerous. And uses for it are killing bacteria. So up here on the top right, I've got some um, sterile instruments. So they're packaged in plastic, then they're exposed to gamma radiation, which will kill everything in there, because uh, it can go through the plastic as well. And then you can handle them and they'll stay sterile until you open the plastic packaging. Uh, cancer treatment. So on the bottom left here, this is uh, a machine that will emit gamma radiation. What we do is we rotate it around the patient so that it goes through lots of different bits of healthy tissue but always goes through the cancer cells and it causes the cancer cells to die and hopefully we can kill off the cancer. And another use for gamma is we can put it inside pipes and detect if there's a leak. So I could have all these pipes that maybe run underground and aren't easy to get to. If we think there's a leak, we could put our gamma emitter in, then detect it from up on the ground because it will travel a long way. And if we suddenly get lots and lots of it in one place, it means there's probably a leak in the pipe there. Okay, so you often get given diagrams that look a bit like this. And each of the arrows will represent a different type of radiation. So all you'll be asked to do maybe is identify which is alpha, which is beta, which is gamma. So just have a think for a second. 
And of course, it's been really nice to you this time because they're all in the right order. So the first one will be alpha. Oh, whoops, Daisy, I forgot to put my pen on. First one will be alpha. The second one will be beta. And the third one will be gamma. So we'll have alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, those symbols that I've used there are just the Greek letters for them. So if you see them looking like that, it just means the same thing. So the one that looks a bit like a fish is an alpha. The beta, I haven't done a very good one there. It sort of looks a bit like a sharp as S if you do uh, German. Um, and then the gamma is this one down here. Okay, so last bit on this one is nuclear power stations. So nuclear power stations create radioactive waste. Uh, plutonium is one of the key waste products and a big problem with the fact that they make plutonium is that if someone gets their hands on enough they can refine it and use it to make nuclear bombs and unfortunately pretty much everything that get you gets used in a nuclear power station will eventually become radioactive so that gives us a few problems because when we deal with nuclear waste there's quite a few things we have to be aware of first of all you want to avoid handling anything so you don't want to be touching it because um, if it's an alpha emitter and you touch it, you could be getting exposed to alpha radiation, which is very damaging. So you have to make sure you use safety equipment, which can be quite expensive. You also have to monitor people's exposure to the radiation. Because being exposed to radiation doesn't automatically mean that you're going to die or you're going to get cancer. It just increases your chance of, being expo of uh, developing cancer. And the more you're exposed, the higher your chance of getting cancer. So what they have to do is monitor people's exposure to make sure that they never get too much to increase their risk beyond an unacceptable point. Um, so what we then have to do with our waste to make sure that people aren't being exposed to it is um, seal it away where no one can get to it. So the really high level, the most dangerous waste, gets sealed into glass and then buried and the low-level waste gets sealed into canisters and is kept in secure sites. Now, the thing with radioactive materials is you can't make them not radioactive. All you can do is wait. And it can take tens of years or it can take thousands of years for them to stop being radioactive. And all you can do about it is wait, really. Um, so that's pretty much it for the nuclear waste. The only thing is that you do have to be aware that if terrorists get hold of nuclear materials they could do a lot of damage with them because if you spread a lot of nuclear material into an environment and people are exposed to it um, it will have consequences that we don't really want so whenever we have nuclear power stations or nuclear waste facilities we need to make sure that they are um, very secure so that nothing happens to that waste okay and the last bit for the hire is you guys have to be able to discuss the ideas of pros and cons about nuclear power stations. And there's only a few they want you to know about. So for the exam, they want you to know as advantages that there is lots of nuclear material available. So there is loads of uranium and plutonium which we can use. And when a, power st a nuclear power station is running, it doesn't emit any pollution. So no carbon dioxide, no methane, no sulfur dioxide, doesn't cause uh, any effect on the greenhouse effect and it doesn't contribute to acid rain either. So they are very clean power stations. The disadvantages are that they are quite high maintenance so it costs a lot of money to get them set up. There is a lot of potential for things to go wrong. So they are really secure and they are really really safe but if something goes wrong it would be a big deal. It's very unlikely that it will but if it does, it's a big problem. And the thing that tends to resonate in people's mind is Chernobyl. So hopefully you all, if I say Chernobyl, you all know what I'm talking about. But um, it was an Eastern European nuclear power station. It's quite a few years ago now. Um, but they were running some safety tests and there was a meltdown in the core. Now, this only happened because they turned all the safety measures off. So it was basically stupidity that caused it. And it could never, ever happen again because um, nuclear power stations have been improved to the point where they wouldn't let people turn off the safeties anymore. But because of things like that big meltdown, there is a lot of fear about nuclear power stations. So it would be very hard for any government to decide that they want to go all in on nuclear power stations because um, they'd have to persuade their population, which can be quite difficult. Okay, so that is it for nuclear radiation. 
Um, remember, if you've got any questions, do not hesitate to ask me.